Hey folks, today we're diving into one of the most powerful tools in Google Sheets, the XLOOKUP function. If you're looking to up your Google Sheets game, you're in the right place. Whether you're a seasoned pro or just starting out, you'll find this feature incredibly handy. The XLOOKUP function can quite happily replace VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, and possibly the index and match functions. This is definitely a function to add to your spreadsheet repertoire. Let's dive in and see how the XLOOKUP function works. XLOOKUP is a game changer because it simplifies the way you search for and retrieve data across your sheets. Unlike the older VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions, XLOOKUP works in any direction, handles missing values with ease, and can return multiple results out of the box. In this video, I'm going to go over the syntax to break this down, then we'll look at five key areas to make this function easy to understand and use. Make sure you stick around to see how you can get the most out of the XLOOKUP function with these five examples. Lastly, the XLOOKUP function has a real superpower up its sleeve, so be sure to keep watching for my bonus tip. Let's break down the syntax. The XLOOKUP function requires at least three arguments, but can take up to six for more advanced searches. Starting with the mandatory arguments. First up is the search key. This is the value you're looking for. Next is the lookup range. This is the range where the search key is located. Next is the return range. This is where the result you want is stored. Now for the optional arguments. Starting with a missing value, this is what to display if the search key isn't found. By default, it's hash NA. Next is the match mode. This lets you choose the type of match you need. More on this later. Lastly, the search mode. This defines the direction of the search. Let's look at a basic example. Imagine you need to find information about a salesperson in your data. Here's how you'd set it up. Our search key is the salesperson's name, which is taken from a drop-down menu in this case. We're looking for a salesperson called James Williamson. The lookup range is where this name appears in the table. In this example, the salesperson names are in column B. Lastly, the return range is where the corresponding data, like sales numbers, is stored. This is the value we want to get back, which in this example is in column C. In this example, the search key is located in the fifth position in the lookup range. Therefore, the fifth value from the results range is returned, which is 108 for James Williamson. Now let's take a look at error handling with the optional missing value argument. With the VLOOKUP and HLOOKUP functions, it was necessary to wrap everything with an IF error function, but with the XLOOKUP function, it's all part of the same function. Adding a simple custom message like NOT FOUND for the missing value argument makes our sheet much more user-friendly and informative. For example, the name Rita Orlando is not listed in the table, so returning nothing or not found tells us something, whereas hash NA prompts an investigation. Therefore, it is always recommended to include a missing value argument to account for the unknown. Next, I want to show you the lookup position. If you're familiar with the VLOOKUP function in Excel or Google Sheets, you'll know that one of its biggest flaws is that the lookup range must always be positioned to the left of the results range. But with the XLOOKUP, it doesn't matter anymore. With XLOOKUP, the position of the lookup range and the results range can be anywhere, but they do have to be the same size in terms of the height of the range or the number of rows. In this example, the lookup range is on the far right and the result range is on the far left, which would not be possible with VLOOKUP. However, the XLOOKUP function handles this without a problem. Let's take a look at an approximate match with the match mode argument. If you recall, the match mode is optional, and when this is omitted, an exact match is returned, which is essentially a zero for the match mode argument. In this example, we're using a minus one match mode argument, which returns the next value that is smaller than the search key. You can see the search key is 80. Therefore, the next lowest value is 79. Hence, William Green is returned since he has a value of 79. If we switch this to using a one match mode argument, this returns the next value that is higher than the search key. You can see the search key is 80, just as before. Therefore, the next highest value is 114. Hence, Isabella Martinez is returned, since she has a value of 114. Next up, we'll take a look at the wildcard match. The XLOOKUP function in Google Sheets supports three wildcards, star, question mark, and tilde, which can be used with the match mode argument. The star wildcard matches zero or more characters. The question mark wildcard matches exactly one character. The tilde, is an escape character that lets you search for a star or question mark instead of using them as wildcards. Imagine we know the surname in this example, but we want to find the first name. 
we can use the XLOOKUP function with a slight modification to the search key to return what we need. You'll notice that the search key contains the star surrounded by quotes, followed by the ampersand sign, and lastly, the cell B14. This essentially looks for Davis in the lookup range and returns the name from the same range. So the result range is the same as the lookup range. As mentioned previously, the star matches zero or more characters. This, of course, should be used with the match mode of two. Lastly, the X lookup function has a real superpower up its sleeve by being able to return multiple columns of results. This type of function is perfect for data analysis, amongst other possibilities. It is also possible to return multiple columns of results with the VLOOKUP function, but it's not an out-of-the-box feature like the XLOOKUP function. With the XLOOKUP, everything remains the same. You simply specify a range of columns with the results range, as you can see in this example. By specifying the range C5 to F10, we're asking the function to return all columns, and that's exactly what you get. And there you have it, a comprehensive look at XLOOKUP in Google Sheets. Play around with these examples and see how they can fit into your own projects. Remember, the more you practice, the easier it will become. If you want to play with the XLOOKUP function in Google Sheets, you can begin by exploring the examples in this video by making a copy of the XLOOKUP demo sheet. I'll pop a link in the description box below. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and turn on notifications for more content just like this. That's all for today, folks. Thanks for watching. Oh.